What's going on Melon Farmers, DMAC here for just a quick little video, something that happened in the DMAC Be A Pro series in the last couple of episodes that absolutely drove me bonkers and I am going to talk to you about that very quickly in this short little video that I'm making for today. Anyway, before we get into it, if you haven't already, scroll down and hit that like button and in this one. Okay, so something happened in Be A Pro that drove me absolutely bonkers and I gotta talk about it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is give a little backstory behind this team, right? So the Vegas Golden Knights, I just went there. This was my first season in Las Vegas. They won the draft lottery. They were the worst team in the league and they won the lottery. We got Jerry Blackburn, an 83 overall medium elite power forward. And I couldn't have been happier to go to that team. He is exactly what I needed on that top line. So. I was like, this is a bad team, we're a rebuilder, I don't expect to go too far in the playoffs, don't expect too much out of the gate. I went to the edit line screen, which I will show you now. Here's the edit line screen, okay? This is what our team looks like. And offensively, uh, defensively, we're not the greatest team in the world. Now, we're not a brutal team, but we are most certainly not the greatest team in the world, all right? There's a lot of room for improvement on this team, especially in our in our bottom six, especially uh, towards the bottom of our defensive pairings and everything. We go to our goaltending. That is an absolute tragedy where we got Freddie Anderson as our starter. He's only 82 overall. We've got Joseph Wall as our backup. He is a legitimate backup, but goaltending is a massive issue for this team. But D-Mac is 96 overall, and I had said the second this season started, you know what? If I've got to carry this team, I will. Because DMAC is 96, he has the ability to literally just steal games for a team. And I'm not talking one here or one there. Uh, I, I mean like every night. You put DMAC on the ice with like Mark Stone, with Jerry Blackburn on special teams, stuff like that. Even Peyton Krebs, not so much Ryan Strom, but even Peyton Krebs. And DMAC is going to steal you a bunch of games. So. Fast forward to 62 games into the season where the Las Vegas Golden Knights are a top five team in the NHL. Not because they deserve to be there, but because DMAC put the entire team on his back, got like over 100 points in 62 games, and carried this team all the way to top five in the NHL. Then we get on the ice and Jerry Blackburn, who is 19 years old now, is an assistant captain already. And we are just unable to hold a lead. It's like the second we get on the ice, like the other team, every shot they take is going in the net. And I'm like, this team is worse than it usually is. What is going on? Why is Blackburn assistant captain? So I go back to the edit line screen again. Now this is 62 games later, and I'm going to show you right here the edit lines where we have been absolutely decimated in our lineup. Forward lines. Defensive lines. Not the goaltending, that remained the same, but our lines got utterly ripped and torn apart because our team was classified as a goddamn rebuilder. So even though we were a top five team in the National Hockey League, our general manager, owner, whatever, decided it would be a really good idea to completely trade away anything of value on this team. Now we have got an AHL lineup and we're in a playoff spot. Why in the world would this ever happen? And this has driven me nuts for the longest time about be a pro mode for the NHL games, dating back forever. It's like they put, and, and they didn't do an absolutely brutal job. You know, the it, when it comes to franchise mode, all of the CPU general managers and owners around the league, they will address issues that they have. They'll pick up players that they do need and you can build a pretty beast mode team, but the problem is they've completely ignored owners and general managers and be a pro mode. So they make the most asinine decisions ever because it's all just based on what they are projected as, okay? So the Vegas Golden Knights were projected to be a rebuilding team that had no hope in hell, right? They had no hope of making the playoffs. They picked up DMAC. He's going to be the future star of the franchise, but... They had no hope that we were going to make the playoffs or be a contender or anything like that. So what did they do? 
at the deadline rather than looking at our record, looking at our team, how it's growing, how our chemistry is growing. They said, nope, rebuilder, sell it all. So they sold every asset we had, abs effectively destroying our chances to... to not, not destroying our chances to make the playoffs, because I'm pretty sure we're pretty much already in the playoffs, but destroying our chances to do anything in the playoffs. Meaning, they pointlessly gutted a team that even if we were to go on a 20-game losing streak, we would miss the playoffs, but would likely get, like, the dreaded 16th pick. So we would not be a lottery team that literally serves almost no purpose whatsoever to gut this team and sell but we were classified as a rebuilder, so that is just how they act. They just act like we're a rebuilding team, tear it all down, and better luck next year when we've got 40 wins in 60 games. We are a number five, like a top five team in the NHL, and they absolutely just gutted this entire team. The only way I'm going to liken it is like I've done in the episode where all of this came to light, where I realized that this was happening, was I likened it to the Chicago Blackhawks this year. Everybody in their power rankings had the Chicago Blackhawks at 31st in the NHL this year. Oh my god. Okay, so they, they lost Crow. They lost Sod again. They got no Nylander, no Taves, no Doc. They had lost, uh, really early on, they lost to Brinkett and Boakvist really, really early because of COVID protocol or long-term injury, stuff like that. They went, this team is dead in the water. And lo and behold, out of nowhere... Patrick Kane, Alex DeBrinkett, P.U. Suter, freaking Yanmark, and like Kevin Lankinen. They put the team on their back and they've got a winning record. They are completely in the picture right now and they've got a good chance. They could honestly be a huge upset team and they could make the playoffs this year. Do you think that Bowman is just going to completely gut the team like 25 games from now? If they can continue... Playing like this, they are legitimate, legitimately like teams that are, that's a team that's going to make the playoffs. Do you think that Chicago is just going to start selling assets? Really? No. The, but but the, the, like with the, the general managers and the owners in NHL 21's be a pro, there's no common sense. There's, there's only one factor, rebuilder. That's all that matters to it. Like that's all that matters to the game. There has to be, they got to find some way to program in. Like there's got to be other factors too, not just one factor. Like, well, this team is a champion. So win the cup or you're a failure. It's like, no, you're not a champion. You have a really good number one player. You have a really good number one defender and a really good goaltender, but you have no team around those three people, but you could still be considered a champion team, but have a terrible team. Your whole, your top line could be great. Your top pairing's great and your goaltending's great. But your bottom 4D is terrible, and your bottom 9 forwards are absolutely terrible. That's not going to win you games. You are still going to miss the playoffs, even though you've got even 6 really good players, because you have trash everywhere else, and that is the majority of your team that is garbage. So it's like, you know, but the, the, the just one little factor is all that matters in these games. And like, we, you're like EA, you really got to do something about this. We've had, what, 27, 28 games Something like that released at this point, and we still, we're, we're not anywhere close to where we need to be to have a truly immersive NHL game. It's like, we're, we're so far away. And now that the year is going on and everyone has experienced just about everything that this game has to offer, it's like the bugs and the, the problems and stuff. They're really coming to light and they're really adding up fast. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. There's new videos coming all the freaking time. And until next time, you beautiful melon farmers, have a good one.